Okay, now, what I put on the board are some ionization energies, the first ionization energy for each element, lithium through neon. Now, the next time we do a lab, the next class, we're going to make a graph of all the ionization energies in period four. That's going to include the transition elements. You will see on that graph the data and what the unit labels are for that data. Here, I don't have any unit labels. These are just relative numbers that shows a relative increase in value as I go from lithium to neon. Do you see that? Yes? So, the ionization energy to remove that is going to be the lowest, and the ionization energy to remove that will be the highest. Does that make sense? So let's divide this up. We'll say that that's five, okay? We'll say that that's five. The energy level here on the y-axis is this value here, and on the x-axis is the atomic number, the Z, correct? Yes? So for, for lithium, we'll put that right there, okay? Now, beryllium is quite a bit more than, than what? Than lithium. So beryllium is going to be higher, correct? Yes? Now, notice this. Notice that the one for boron is a little bit less than that for beryllium. Now, some textbooks will say to you that that's because the result will be far more stable. If you get rid of that electron, then you're going to have a set of paired electrons. And that might or may not be true. People want to say that, in, you know, intuitively that that's the case. That's arguable. It also could be that when we talk about bonding, there's no bonding site. There's a bonding site right there. Where if I wanted to do covalent bonding, there would be a bonding site right there. Okay? It also could be that <coughs> See, the, the P electrons, this is, this is drawn well, but it doesn't show something that's very important, and that is that the P orbitals, the sub-energy sub level P and its orbitals, are at a higher energy level than the corresponding S. Do you see that? So this is not drawn correctly relative to its energy levels. The reason I drew the orbitals this way is to show the orbitals compared to one another. Yes, in terms of filling. But in terms of energy, these are, it's incorrect. So understand this, that the P energy level is, is shifted. So the lowest is this, then this, then this, then this, then this, etc. Do you see that? So, this P suborbital here is at a higher energy level than that one. No. Yes. This is at a higher energy level than the second one. Yes. Yeah, because that one is an S. Because this is out of a P. This is a higher, it's higher. Plus, it's shielded by the innermost level of S. one. Yeah, the, inner, the innermost energy level one has two electrons. That's shielding that electron a little bit, a little bit. This is also a higher energy, so I'm gonna need less energy to remove it. You see that? This is actually a little bit less energetic than this one. Just a little bit. So that would be harder to remove. So it goes from, 
it goes down a little bit here, and then it goes back up to 11.3 where it should be. See that? That's 6, correct? So that's going to be 14.5. You see that? How you get that little spike there? So it's going to look like this. It's going to go from here, down, and then back up. So you see that downward spike? That downward spike is very important when you're predicting behavior of elements. That downward spike is going to be seen when we do the fourth period. Next class. We're going to see that spike there, too. You will see that spike on all the periods. So that spike is not just talking about the properties of, of boron versus beryllium. It's talking about the properties of group 13 with group 2. So not only is it important to understand the properties of an individual family or group, but it's also important to understand the properties of an individual group or family relative to the family that preceded it and succeeds it. I said that well, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> Caffeine. <laughs> All right. So let's go, let's go to the next one. Number six, we did seven, 14.5. So it's going up, right? But look at eight. Eight drops back down. Because look, that electron. I can take that electron out. Again, it's shielded by the P's, but it's also the half, the half filled P is extremely stable. And we'll see that when we talk about hybridization. Extremely stable. Half filled D, extremely stable. Half filled F, extremely stable half-filled P, extremely stable. So what happens is you get this little drop, tiny drop of energy. Then it goes back up, and then it goes up way up like that. It goes way up to 21.6, okay? Maybe not that high. See this drop, okay? So we see that we have two areas of curiosity that have to be understood and explained. I have a handout which I'll give you next time on ionization energies. Clear? Now, within the next day or two, I'm going to put up the last two lectures. I don't think I put Greek lecture up, did I? Did I? I put Roman net lecture up, right? Roman lectures up. The answers to your worksheet are all there. Yes? So I could literally give you a quiz today, but I'm not going to. That'd be like that. But I'm going to put up Greek and acid nomenclature, and you're responsible for it. They're easy. When you read it, you'll see. Clear? We will review it. There's two more. Greek. No, these are ones that I'm going to make. Greek, just a second. Oh, God bless you. Wonderful. Look at that. Oh, look at that. <laughs> I love it. Look at that. Oh, my God. Look at that. I'm all set. Period, nice, colorful periodic tables with ionization energies. Isn't that cool? Very cool. That's for next time. Excellent. I should laminate one of these. This is great, huh? Very exciting. Ahmed, are you excited still? <laughs> Ahmed is so excited. I've never, look at him, look at him, look at him. He's like, hysterical, look at him, turn around, look at him. It's unbelievable. <laughs> I love, he's happy. He's happy, he's a happy guy. Okay, so, look for the videos on nomenclature. Clear? Yes? Look for the videos on ionization energies one and two. And what we're going to do now, between now and the end, we're going to do another video. And it's going to be a pretty simple video, actually. But it's going to be on atomic radius and how atomic radius 
fluctuates horizontally, okay? How atomic radius fluctuates horizontally within a period. And we're going to use the same period, okay? We're going to use period two. We're off.